Part One of Trachiniae. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Trachiniae by Sophocles. Translated by Lewis Campbell, 1830 to 1908. Part One. The Trachinian Maidens, the Persons. Deanira, wife of Heracles, an attendant, Helus, son of Heracles and Deanira, chorus of Trachinian maidens, a messenger, Lycas, the herald, a nurse, an old man, Heracles, Iole, who does not speak. Scene, before the temporary abode of Heracles in Trachis. This tragedy is named from the chorus from the subject it might have been called deanira or the death of heracles the centaur nessus in dying by the arrow of heracles which had been dipped in the venom of the hydra persuaded the bride deanira whose beauty was the cause of his death to keep some of the blood from the wound as a love charm for her husband many years afterwards when heracles was returning from his last exploit of sacking ikalia in uboia he sent before him by his herald lycas iole the king's daughter whom he had espoused deanira when she had discovered this commissioned lycas when he returned to present his master with a robe which he anointed with the charm hoping by this means to regain her lord's affection but the poison of the hydra did its work and heracles died in agony deanira having already killed herself on ascertaining what she had done the action takes place in Trachis, near the Maliot Gulf, where Heracles and Deianira, by permission of Ceyx, the king of the country, have been living in exile. At the close of the drama, Heracles, while yet alive, is carried towards his pyre on Mount Ita. The Trachinian Maidens Deianira Men say, t'was old experience gave the word, no lot of mortal ere he die can once be known for good or evil but i know before i come to the dark dwelling place mine is a lot adverse and hard and sore who yet at pleuron in my father's home of all aetolian women had most cause to fear my bridal for a river god swift achilleus was my suitor there and in three shapes required me from my father now in his own bull likeness now a serpent of coiling sheen and now in manly form with bovine front while from the shadowy beard sprang fountain waters in perpetual spray looking for such a husband i poor maid still prayed that death might find me ere i knew this nuptial later to my glad relief zeus and alcmena's glorious offspring came and closed with him in conflict and released my heart from torment how the fight was won i could not tell if any were who saw unshaken of dread foreboding such may speak but i sate quailing with an anguished fear lest beauty might procure me naught but pain till he that rules the issue of all strife gave fortunate end if fortunate for since assigned by that day's conquest i have known the couch of heracles my life is spent in one continual terror for his fate night brings him and ere morning some fresh toil drives him afar and i have borne him seed which he like some strange husbandman that farms a distant field finds but at sowing time and once in harvest such a weary life still tossed him to and fro no sooner home but forth again serving i know not whom and when his glorious head had risen beyond these labours came the strongest of my fear for since he quelled the might of iphitus we here in trachis dwell far from our home dependent on a stranger but where he is gone none knoweth only this i know his going pierced my heart with pangs for him and now i am all but sure he bears some woe these fifteen months he hath sent me not one word and i have cause for fear ere he set forth he left a scroll with me whose dark intent i oft pray heaven may bring no sorrow down attendant queen deanira many a time ere now have i beheld thee with all tearful moan bewailing the departure of thy lord but if it be permitted that a slave should tender counsel to the free my voice may venture this 
of thy strong band of sons why is not one commissioned to explore for heracles and why not helas first whom most it would be seen to show regard for tidings of his father's happiness ah here i see him bounding home with feet apt for employment if you count me wise he and my words attend upon your will enter helas deanira dear child dear boy even from the lowliest head wise counsel may come forth this woman here though a bond-maiden hath a free-born tongue helas what word is spoken mother may i know deanira that with thy father lost to us so long tis shame thou dost not learn his dwelling-place helas yea i have learnt if one may trust report deanira where art thou told his seat is fixed my son helas tis said that through the length of this past year he wrought as bondman to a lydian girl deanira hath he borne that then nothing can be strange helas well that is over i am told he is free deanira where is he rumoured then alive or dead helas in rich euboea besieging as they tell the town of eurytus or offering siege deanira child hast thou heard what holy oracles he left with me touching that very land helas what were they mother for i never knew deanira that either he must end his being there or this one feat performed his following time should grace his life with fair prosperity wilt thou not then my child when he is held in such a crisis of uncertain peril run to his aid since we must perish with him or owe our lasting safety to his life helas i will go mother had i heard this voice of prophecy long since i had been there fear is unwonted for our father's lot but now i know my strength shall all be spent to learn the course of these affairs in full deanira go then my son though late to learn and do what wisdom bids hath certainty of gain exit helas deanira withdraws chorus entering and turning towards the east strophe one born of the starry night in her undoing lulled in her bosom at thy parting glow o son i bid thee show what journey is alcmena's child pursuing what region holds him now among winding channels of the deep or asian plains or rugged western steep declare it thou peerless in vision of thy flashing ray that lightens on the world with each new day antistrophe one sad deanera bride of battle wooing ne'er lets her tearful eyelids close in rest but in love longing breast like some lorn bird its desolation ruing of her great husband's way still mindful worn with harrowing fear lest some new danger for him should be near by night and day pines on her widowed couch of ceaseless thought with dread of evil destiny distraught enter deanira strophe two for many as are billows of the south blowing unweariedly or northern gale one going and another coming on incessantly baffling the gazer's eye such cretan ocean of unending toil cradles our cadmus born and swells his fame but still some power doth his foot recall from stumbling down to gloomy hades hall antistrophe two wherefore in censure of thy mood i bring glad though opposing counsel let not hope grow weary never hath a painless life been cast on mortals by the power supreme of the all-disposer Cronos son but joy and sorrow visit in perpetual round all mortals even as circleth still on high the constellation of the northern sky epode what lasteth in the world not starry night nor wealth nor tribulation but is gone all suddenly while to another soul the joy or the privation passes on these hopes i bid thee also o my queen hold fast continually for who hath seen zeus so forgetful of his own how can his providence forsake his son deanira i see you have been told of my distress and that hath brought you but my inward woe be it evermore unknown to you as now such the fair garden of untrammelled ease where the young life grows safely no fierce heat no rain no wind disturbs it but unharmed it rises amid airs of peace and joy till maiden turn to matron and one night brings years of care for husband or for child 
Then, image through her own calamity, Some one may guess the burden of my life. Full many have been the sorrows I have wept, But one above the rest I tell to-day. When my great husband parted last from home, He left within the house an ancient scroll, Inscribed with characters of mystic note, which Heracles had never heretofore in former labours cared to let me see, as bound for bright achievement, not for death. But now, as though his life had end, he told what marriage portion I must keep, what shares he left his sons out of their father's ground. And set a time, when fifteen moons were spent, counted from his departure, that even then, or he must die, or if that date were out and he had run beyond it, he should live thenceforth a painless and untroubled life. Such by heaven's fiat was the promised end of Heracles' long labours, as he said. So once the ancient oak tree had proclaimed in high Dodona through the sacred doves, of which prediction on this present hour, in destined order of accomplishment, the veritable issue doth depend. And I, dear friends, while taking rest, will oft start from sweet slumbers with a sudden fear, scared by the thought my life may be bereft of the best husband in the world of men chorus hush for i see approaching one in haste garlanded as if laden with good news enter messenger messenger queen deanira mine shall be the tongue to free thee first from fear alcmina's child is living be assured and triumphing and bringing to our gods the fruits of war deanira what meanst thou, aged sir, by what thou sayest? Messenger, that soon thy husband, envied all around, will come, distinguished with victorious might. Deanira, what citizen or stranger told thee this? Messenger, your herald Lycus, where the oxen graze the summer meadow cries as to a crowd. I, hearing, flew off hither, that being first to bring thee word thereof, I might be sure to win reward and gratitude from thee. Deanira, and how is he not here if all be well messenger crossed by no light impediment my queen for all the maliac people gathered round throng him with questions that he cannot move but he must still the travail of each soul and none will be dismissed unsatisfied such willing audience he unwillingly harangues but soon himself will come in sight Deanira, o zeus who rulest Ita's virgin wold, at last, though late, thou hast vouchsafed us joy. Lift up your voices, O my women, ye within the halls, and ye beyond the gate, for now we reap the gladness of a ray that dawns unhoped for in this rumour's sound. Chorus. With a shout by the hearth, let the palace roof ring, from those that are dreaming of bridal, and ye, young men, let your voices in harmony sing to the god of the quiver, the lord of the free and the paean withal from the maiden band to artemis huntress of many a land let it rise o'er the glad roof-tree to phoebus own sister with fire in each hand and the nymphs that her co-mates be my spirit soars o sovereign of my soul i will accept the thrilling flute's control they dance the ivy-crowned thyrsus sea with bacchic fire is kindling me and turns my emulous tread where'er the mazy dance may lead you oi you oi o pn send us joy see dearest queen behold before thy gaze the event will now unfold deanira think not mine eyes have kept such careless guard dear maids that i could miss this moving train herald i bid thee hail although so late appearing if thou bringest health with thee enter lycus with captive women lycus a happy welcome on a happy way as prosperous our achievement meet it is good words should greet bright actions mistress mine deanira kind friend first tell me what i first would know shall i receive my heracles alive lycus i left him certainly alive and strong blooming in health not with disease oppressed deanira at home or in a savage country tell lycus Euboea's island hath a promontory where to Canaan Zeus he consecrates rich altars and the tribute of the ground. Deanira, moved by an oracle or from some vow? Lycas, so vowed he when he conquered with the spear the country of these women whom you see. Deanira, and who by heaven are they? 
who was their sire their case is piteous or eludes my thought lichas he took them for the service of the gods in his own house when high ecalia fell deanira was it then before that city he was kept those endless ages of uncounted time lichas not so the greater while he was detained among the lydians sold as he declares to bondage nor be jealous of the word since heaven my queen was author of the deed enthralled so to asian omphile he as himself a verse fulfilled his year the felt reproach whereof so chafed his soul he bound fierce curses on himself and sware that children wife and all he yet would bring in captive chains the mover of this harm nor did this perish like an idle word but when the stain was off him straight he drew allied battalions to assault the town of eurytus whom soul of earthly powers he had noted as the source of his annoy because having received him in his hall a guest of ancient days he burst on him with outrage of loud voice and villainous mind saying with his hand upon the unerring bow ecalia's princes could o'ershoot his skill and born to bondage he must quail beneath his overlord lastly to crown this cry when at a banquet he was filled with wine he flung him out of door whereat being wroth when iphitus to the tirinthian height followed the track where his brood mares had strayed he while the thought and eye of the man by chance were sundered threw him from the towering cliff in anger for which deed the olympian king father of gods and men delivered him to be a bond-slave nor could brook the offence that of all lives he vanquished this alone should have been tamed by guile for had he wrought in open quittance of the wrong even zeus had surely granted that his cause was just the braggart hath no favour even in heaven whence they o'er weening with their evil tongue are now all dwellers in the house of death their ancient city a captive but these women whom thou beholdest from their blessed estate brought suddenly to taste a piteous woe come to thy care this task thy wedded lord ordained and i his faithful minister seek to perform but for his noble self when with pure hands he hath done sacrifice to his great father for the victory given look for his coming lady this last word of all my happy speech is far most sweet chorus now surety of delight is thine my queen part by report and part before thine eye deanira yea now i learn this triumph of my lord joy reigns without a rival in my breast this needs must run with that in fellowship yet wise consideration even of good is flecked with fear of what reverse may come and i dear friends when i behold these maids am visited with sadness deep and strange poor friendless beings in a foreign land wandering forlorn in homeless orphanhood erewhile free daughters of a free-born race now snared in strong captivity for life o zeus of battles breaker of the war ne'er may i see thee turn against my seed so cruelly or if thou meanest so let me be spared that sorrow by my death such fear in me the sight of these hath wrought who art thou of all damsels most distressed single or child-bearing thy looks would say a maid of no mean lineage lichas tell who is the stranger nymph who gave her birth who was her sire mine eye hath pitied her o'er all as she o'er all hath sense of woe lichas what know i why shouldst thou demand perchance not lowest in the list of souls there born deanira how if a princess offspring of their king lichas i cannot tell i did not question far deanira have none of her companions breathed her name lichas i brought them silently i did not hear deanira yet speak it to us of thyself poor maid tis sorrow not to know thee who thou art lichas she'll ne'er untie her tongue if she maintain an even tenor since nor more nor less would she disclose but poor unfortunate with agonizing sobs and tears she mourns this crushing sorrow from the day she left her wind-swept home her case is cruel sure and claims a privilege from all who feel deanira well let her go and pass beneath the roof in peace as she desires nor let fresh pain from me be added to her previous woe she hath enough already come away let's all within at once that thou mayest speed thy journey 
and i may order all things here exit lichas with captives into the house deanira is about to follow them re-enter messenger messenger pause first there on the threshold till you learn apart from those who tis you take within and more besides that you yet know not of which deeply imports your knowing of all this i throughly am informed deanira what cause hast thou thus to arrest my going messenger stand and hear not idle was my former speech nor this deanira say must we call them back in presence here or wouldst thou tell thy news to these and me messenger to thee and these i may but let those be deanira well they are gone let words declare thy drift messenger that man in all that he hath lately said hath sinned against the truth or now he's false or else unfaithful in his first report deanira what tell me thy full meaning clearly forth that thou hast uttered is all mystery messenger i heard this herald say while many thronged to hearken that this maiden was the cause why lofty towered ecalia and her lord fell before heracles whom love alone of heavenly powers had warmed to this emprise and not the lydian thraldom or the tasks of rigorous omphile nor that wild fate of rock-thrown iphitus though now he swerved from the first tale wronging his former word when he that was her sire could not be brought to yield the maid for heracles to hold in love unrecognized he framed ere long a feud about some trifle and set forth in arms against this damsel's fatherland where eurytus the herald said was king and slew the chief her father yea and sacked their city now returning as you see he sends her hither to his halls no slave nor unregarded lady dream not so since all his heart is kindled with desire i o oh my queen thought meet to show thee all the tale i chanced to gather from his mouth which many heard as well as i in the midst of trachis market-place and can confirm my witness i am pained if my plain speech sound harshly but the honest truth i tell deanira ah me where am i whither am i fallen what hidden woe have i unwarily taken beneath my roof o oh, misery was she then nameless as her convoy swear messenger nay most distinguished both in birth and mien called in her day of freedom iole eurytus daughter of whose parentage forsooth as ignorant he ne'er would speak chorus i curse not all the wicked but the man whose secret practices deform his life deanira say maidens how must i proceed the words now spoken have bewildered all my mind chorus go in and question lycus who perchance will tell the truth if you but tax him home deanira i will you counsel reasonably messenger and i shall i bide here till thou comes forth or how deanira remain for see without my sending for him he issueth from the palace of himself enter lycas lycas what message must i carry to my lord tell me my queen i am going as thou seest deanira so slow in coming and so quickly flown ere one have time to talk with thee anew lycas what wouldst thou ask me i am bent to hear deanira and art thou bent on truth in the reply lycas by heaven in all that i have knowledge of deanira then tell me who is she thou broughtst with thee lycas an islander i cannot trace her stock messenger look hither man who is it to whom thou speakest lycas why such a question what is thine intent messenger nay start not but make answer if thou knowest lycas to deanira aeneas's queenly child heracles wife if these mine eyes be true my mistress messenger ay that is the very word i long to hear thee speak thy mistress sayest lycas to whom i am bound messenger hold there what punishment wilt thou accept if thou art found to be faithless to her lycas i faithless what dark speech hast thou contrived messenger not i at all tis thou dost wrap thy thoughts in the dark lycas well i will go tis folly to have heard thee for so long 
Messenger. You go not till you answer one word more. Lycos. One or a thousand? You'll not stint, I see. Messenger. Thou knowest the captive maid thou leddest home. Lycos. I do. But wherefore ask? Messenger. Did you not say that she, on whom you look with ignorant eye, was Iole, the daughter of the king, committed to your charge? Lycos. Where? Among whom? What witness of such words will bear thee out? Messenger. Many and sound. A goodly company in Trachis' marketplace heard thee speak thus. Lycos. Aye. I said twas rumoured, but I could not give my vague impression for advised report. Messenger. Impression, quotha. Did you not on oath proclaim your captive for your master's bride? Lycos. My master's bride? Dear lady, by the gods, who is the stranger? For I know him not. Messenger. One who was present where he heard thee tell, how that whole city was subdued and taken, not for the bondage to the Lydian girl, but through the longing passion for this maid. Lycos. Dear lady, let the fellow be removed. To prate with madmen is mere foolishness. Deanira. Nay, I entreat thee by his name, whose fire lightens down Ita's topmost glen. Be not a niggard of the truth. Thou tell'st thy tale to no weak woman, but to one who knows mankind are never constant to one joy. Whoso would buffet love aspires in vain, for love leads even immortals at his will and me. Then how not others like to me? For madness sure in me to blame my lord when this hath caught him, or the woman there, his innocent accomplice in a thing, no shame to either, and no harm to me, it is not so. But if from him thou learnest the lore of falsehood, it were best unlearnt. Or if the instruction comes of thine own thought, such would-be kindness doth not prove thee kind. Then tell me all the truth. To one free-born, the name of liar is a hateful lot, and thou canst not be hid. Thy news was heard by many who will tell me. If thou fearest, thou hast no cause. For doubtfulness is pain, but to know all, what harm? His loves ere now, were they not manifold? And none hath borne reproach or evil word from me. She shall not, though his new passion were as strong as death. Since most mine eye hath pitied her, because her beauty was the ruin of her life. And all unweeding, she her own bright land, poor hapless one, hath ravaged and enslaved. Let that be as it must. But for thy part, though false to others, be still true to me. Chorus. Tis fairly said. Comply. Thou ne'er wilt blame her faithfulness, and thou wilt earn our loves. Lycas. Yea, dear my queen, now I have seen thee hold thy mortal wishes within mortal bounds so meekly, I will freely tell thee all. It is as he avers, this maiden's love, piercing through Heracles, was the sole cause, why her Ecalia, land of plenteous woe, was made the conquest of his spear. And he, for I dare so far clear him, never bade concealment or denial. But myself, fearing the word might wound thy queenly heart, sinned, if thou count such tenderness a sin. But now that all is known for both your sakes, his and thine own no less, look favouringly upon the woman, and confirm the word thou here hast spoken in regard to her. For he whose might is in all else supreme is wholly overmastered by her love. Deanira, yea, so my mind is bent, I will do so. I will not in a bootless strife against heaven augment my misery with self-sought ill. Come, go we in, that thou mayst bear from me such message as is meet, and also carry gifts such as are befitting to return for gifts new given. Thou ought not to depart unladen, having brought so much with thee. Exeunt. Chorus. Strophe triumphant in her might the queen of soft delight still ranges onward with resistless sway what she from kronos son and strong poseidon won and pluto king of night i durst not say but who to earn this bride came forth in sinewy pride to strive or ere the nuptial might be known with fearless heart i tell what heroes wrestled well with showering blows and dust in clouds upthrown antistrophe one was a river bold, horn-crowned, with tramp fourfold, bull Achelous, Archanania's fear. And one from Bacchus' town, own son of Zeus, came down, with brandished mace, 
bent bow and barbed spear who then in battle brunt together front to front hurled eager both to win the beauteous prize and cypris mid the fray alone that dreadful day sate umpire holding promise in her eyes epide then clashed the fist then clanged the bow then horns gave crashing blow for blow whilst as they clung the twining hip throw both essay and hurtling foreheads fearful play and groans from each were wrung but the tender fair one far away sate watching with an eye of piteous cheer a mother's heart will heed the thing i say till one by him who freed her from her fear sudden she leaves her mother's gentle side born through the waste our hero's tender bride enter deanira deanira dear friends while yonder herald in the house holds converse with the captives ere he go i have stolen forth to you partly to tell the craft my hand hath compassed and in part to crave your pity for my wretchedness for i have taken to my hearth a maid and yet methinks no maiden any more but married as some merchant might receive a cargo fraught with treason to his soul and now we two are closed in one embrace beneath one coverlet such generous meed for faith in guarding home this dreary while hath the kind heracles our trusty spouse sent in return yet oft as he hath caught this same distemperature i know not how to harbour indignation against him but who that is a woman could endure to dwell with her both married to one man one bloom is still advancing one doth fade the budding flower is cropped the full-blown head is left to wither while love passeth by unheeding wherefore i am sore afraid he will be called my husband but her mate for she is younger yet no prudent wife would take this angrily as i have said but dear ones i will tell you of a way whereof i have bethought me to prevent this heartbreak i had hidden of long time in a bronze urn the ancient centaur's gift which i when a mere girl culled from the wound of hairy-breasted nessus in his death he o'er avenus rolling depths for hire conveyed men with his arms not plying the oar of the ferryman or canvas winged bark who when with heracles a new-made bride i followed by my father sending forth shouldering me too in the mid-stream annoyed with wanton touch and i cried out and he zeus son turned suddenly and from his bow sent a winged shaft that whizzed into his chest to the lungs then the weird creature spake so much in dying child of aged aeneas since thou wert my last burden thou shalt have this outcome of our transit if but thou wilt do my bidding with a careful hand collect and bear away the clotted gore that clogs my wound e'en where the monster snake had dyed the arrow with dark tinct of gall and thou shalt have this as a charm of soul for heracles that never through the eye shall he receive another love than thine bethinking me thereof for since his death i kept it in a closet locked with care i have applied it to this robe with such addition as his loving voice ordained the thing is done no criminal attempts could e'er be mine far be they from my thought as i abhor the woman who conceives them but if by any means through gentle spells and bonds on heracles affection we may triumph o'er this maiden in his heart my scheme is perfected unless you deem mine action wild if so i will desist chorus if any ground of confidence approve thine act we cannot check thy counsel here deanira my confidence is grounded on belief though unconfirmed as yet by actual proof chorus well do it and try assurance cannot come till action bring experience after it deanira the truth will soon be known the man e'en now is coming forth and quickly will be there screen ye but well my counsel doubtful deeds wrapped close will not deliver us to shame enter lichas lichas daughter of aeneas tell me thy commands already time rebukes our tardiness deanira for that i have been busied while thy tongue indoors was talking to the stranger maids lichas that thou shouldst take this spacious web a present from these fingers to my lord and when thou givest it say that none of men must wear it on his shoulders before him and neither light of sun may look upon it nor holy temple court nor household flame till he in open station for the gods display it on a day when bulls are slaughtered so once i vowed 
that should I ever see or hear his safe return, I would enfold his glorious person in this robe, and show to all the gods in doing sacrifice him a fresh worshipper in fresh array. The truth hereof he will with ease descry, betokened on this treasure-guarding seal. Now go and be advised of this in chief, to act within thine office, then of this, to bear thee so that from his thanks and mine, meeting in one, a twofold grace may spring. Lycos. If this my Hermes craft be firm and sure, then never will I fail thee, O my queen. But I will show the casket as it is to whom I bear it, and in faithfulness add all the words thou sendest in fit place. Deanira. Go then at once. Thou hast full cognizance how things within the palace are preserved. Lycos i know and will declare there is no flaw deanira methinks thou knowest too for thou hast seen my kind reception of the stranger maid lycas i saw and was amazed with heart-struck joy deanira what more is there to tell too rash i fear were thy report of longing on my part till we can learn if we be longed for there exeunt severally end of part one Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part two of Trachiniae by Sophocles. Translated by Lewis Campbell, eighteen thirty to nineteen o eight. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. The Trachinian Maidens, Part Two. Chorus. Strophe. O ye that haunt the strand where ships in quiet land, near Eta's height and the warm rock drawn well, and ye round Melis inland gulf who dwell, worshipping her who wields the golden wand, their Hellas wisest meet in council strong. Soon shall the flute arise with sound of glad surprise, thrilling your sense with no unwelcome song but tones that to the harp of heavenly muse belong. Antistrophe. Zeus and Alcmena's son, all deeds of glory done, speeds now triumphant to his home, whom we twelve weary months of blind expectancy, lost in vast distance from our country gone, while sadly languishing his loving wife, still flowing down with tears, pined with unnumbered fears. But Ares lately stung to furious strife, frees him for ever from the toilsome life epode oh let him come to-day ne'er may his vessel stay but glide with feathery sweep of many an oar till from his altar by yon island shore even to our town he wind his prosperous way in mean returning mild and inly reconciled with that anointing in his heart ingrained which the dark centaur's wizard lips ordained enter deanira Deanira, oh how i fear my friends lest all too far i have ventured in my action of to-day chorus what ails thee deanira aeneas's child deanira i know not but am haunted by a dread lest quickly i be found to have performed a mighty mischief through bright hopes betrayed chorus thou dost not mean thy gift to heracles deanira indeed i do now i perceive how fond is eagerness where actions are obscure chorus tell if it may be told thy cause of fear deanira a thing is come to pass which should i tell will strike you with strange wonder when you learn for o oh, my friends the stuff wherewith i dress that robe a flock of soft and milk-white wool is shrivelled out of sight not gnawn by tooth of any creature here but self-consumed frittered and wasting on the courtyard stones to let you know the circumstance at full i will speak on of all the centaur thing when labouring in his side with the fell point of the shaft enjoined me i had nothing lost but his vaticination in my heart remained indelible as though engraved with pen of iron upon brass twas thus i was to keep this unguent closely hid in dark recesses where no heat of fire or warming ray might reach it till with fresh anointing i addressed it to an end so i had done and now this was to do within my chamber covertly i spread the ointment with a piece of wool a tuft pulled from a home-bred sheep and as ye saw i folded up my gift and packed it close 
in hollow casket from the glaring sun but entering in a fact encounters me past human wit to fathom with surmise for as it happened i had tossed aside the bit of wool i worked with carelessly into the open daylight mid the blaze of helios beam and as it kindled warm it fell away to nothing crumbled small like dust in severing wood by sawyer strewn so on the point of vanishing it lay but from the place where it had lain break forth a frothy scum in clots of seething foam like the rich draught in purple vintage poured from bacchus vine upon the thirsty ground and i unhappy know not toward what thought to turn me but i seen mine act as dire for wherefore should the centaur for what end show kindness to the cause for whom he died that cannot be but seeking to destroy his slayer he cajoled me this i learned too late by sad experience for no good and if i err not now my hapless fate is all alone to be his murderess for well i know the shaft that made the wound gave pain to charon who was more than man and wheresoe'er it falls it ravageth all the wild creatures of the world and now this gory venom blackly spreading bane from nessus angry wound must it not cause the death of heracles i think it must yet my resolve is firm if aught harm him my death shall follow in the self-same hour she cannot bear to live in evil fame who cares to have a nature pure from ill chorus horrid mischance must needs occasion fear but hope is not condemned before the event deanira an ill-devised proceeding not even hope remains to minister a cheerful mind chorus yet to have erred unwittingly abates the fire of wrath and thou art in this case deanira so speaks not he who hath a share of sin but who is clear of all offence at home chorus twere well to silence further speech unless thou hast aught for thine own son for he is here who went erewhile to find his father forth helis re-entering o oh, mother mother i would to heaven one of three things were true either that thou wert dead or living wert no mother to me or hadst gained a mind furnished with better thoughts than thou hast now deanira my son what canst thou so mislike in me helis i tell thee thou this day hast been the death of him that was thy husband and my sire deanira what word hath passed thy lips my child my child helis a word that must be verified for who can make the accomplished fact as things undone deanira alas my son what saidst thou who hath told that i have wrought a deed so full of woe helis twas i myself that saw with these mine eyes my father's heavy state no hearsay word deanira and where didst thou come near him and stand by helis art thou to hear it on then with my tale when after sacking eurytus great city he marched in triumph with first fruits of war there is a headland last of long euboea surf beat canaeum where to his father zeus he dedicates high altars in a grove there first i saw him gladdened from desire and when he now addressed him to the work of various sacrifice the herald lycus arrived from home bearing thy fatal gift the deadly robe wherewith invested straight as thou hast given charge he sacrificed the firstlings of the spoil twelve bulls entire each after each but the full count he brought was a clear hundred of all kinds of head then the all hapless one commenced his prayer in solemn gladness for the bright array but presently when from the holy things and from the richness of the oak tree core there issued flame mingled with blood a sweat rose on his flesh and close to every limb clung like stone drapery from the craftsman's hand the garment glued unto his side then came the tearing pangs within his bones and then the poison feasted like the venom tooth of deadly basilisk when this began he shouted on poor lycus none to blame for thy sole crime what guile is here thou knave what was thy fraud in fetching me this robe he all unknowing in an evil hour declared his message that the gift was thine whereat the hero while the shooting spasm had fastened on the lungs seized him by the foot where the ankle turns in the socket and with a thought hurled on a surf-vexed reef that showed in the sea and rained the grey pulp from the hair the brain being scattered with the blood 
then the great throng saddened their festival with piteous wail for one in death and one in agony and none had courage to approach my sire convulsed upon the ground then tossed in the air with horrid yells and crying till the cliffs echoed around the mountain promontories of locris and euboea's rugged shore wearied at length with flinging on the earth and shrieking oft with lamentable cry cursing the fatal marriage with thyself the all-wretched and the bond to aeneas's house that prize that was the poisoner of his peace he lifted a wild glance above the smoke that hung around and midst the crowd of men saw me in tears and looked on me and said o son come near fly not from my distress though thou shouldst be consumed in my death but lift and bear me forth and if thou mayest set me where no one of mankind shall see me but if thy heart withhold thee yet convey me out of this land as quickly as ye may let me not die where i am now we then thus urgently commanded laid him down within our bark and hardly to this shore rode him convulsed and roaring presently he will appear alive or lately dead such mother is the crime thou hast devised and done against our sire wherefore let right and vengeance punish thee may i pray so i may for thou absolvest me by thy deed thou that hast slain the noblest of the earth thy spouse whose like thou ne'er wilt see again exit deanira chorus why steal'st thou forth in silence know'st thou not thy silence argues thine accuser's plea helas let her go off would that a sudden flood might sweep her far and swiftly from mine eye why fondle vainly the fair-sounding name of mother when her acts are all unmotherly let her be gone for me and may she find such joy as she hath rendered to my sire exit helas chorus strophe one see where falls the doom of old by the unerring voice foretold when twelve troublous years have rolled then shall end your long desire toil on toil no more shall tire the offspring of the eternal sire lo the destined hour is come lo it hath brought its burden home for when the eyes have looked their last how should sore labour vex again how when the powers of will and thought are past should life be any more enthralled to pain antistrophe one and if nessus withering shroud wrought by destiny and craft steep him in a poisonous cloud steaming from the venomed shaft which to death in hideous lair the many wreathed hydra bear how shall he another day feel the glad warmth of helios ray enfolded by the monster thing of lerna while the cruel sting of the shagged centaur's murderous guileful tongue breaks forth withal to do him painful wrong strophe two and she poor innocent who saw checkless advancing to the gate a mighty harm unto her state this rash young bridal without fear of law gave not her will to aught that caused this woe but since it came through that strange mind's conceiving that ruined her in meeting deeply grieving she mourns with dewy tears and tenderest flow the approaching hour appeareth great with woe some guile-born misery doth fate foreshow antistrophe two the springs of sorrow are unbound and such an agony disclose as never from the hands of foes to afflict the life of heracles was found o dark with battle stains world champion spear that from ecalia's highland leddest then this bride that followed swiftly in thy train how fatally overshadowing was thy fear but these wild sorrows all too clearly come from love's dread minister disguised and dumb half chorus one am i a fool or do i truly hear lament new rising from our master's home tell half chorus two clearly from within a wailing voice peals piteously the house hath some fresh sorrow half chorus one mark how strangely with what cloud upon her brow yon aged matron with her tidings moves enter nurse nurse ah oh, mighty o oh, my daughters was the grief sprung from the gift to heracles conveyed chorus what new thing is befallen why speak'st thou so nurse our queen hath found her latest journey's end even now she is gone without the help of feet chorus not dead nurse you know the whole chorus dead hapless queen nurse the truth hath twice been told 
Chorus. Oh, tell us how. What was her death, poor victim of dire woe? Nurse. Most ruthless was the deed. Chorus. Say, woman, say. What was the sudden end? Nurse. Herself she slew. Chorus. What rage, what madness clutched the mischief-working brand? How could her single thought contrive the accomplishment of death on death? Nurse. Chill iron stopped the sources of her breath. Chorus. And thou, poor helpless crone, did see this done? Nurse. Yea, I stood near and saw. Chorus. How was it? Tell. Nurse. With her own hand this violence was given. Chorus. What do I hear? Nurse. The certainty of truth. Chorus. A child is come from this new bridal that hath rushed within a fresh-born fury of woe. Nurse. Too true. But hadst thou been at hand to see her action, pity would have wrung thy soul. Chorus. Could this be ventured by a woman's hand? Nurse. Ay, and in dreadful wise, as thou shalt hear, when all alone she had gone within the gate, and passing through the court beheld her boy spreading the couch that should receive his sire, ere he returned to meet him, out of sight she hid herself, and fell at the altar's foot, and loudly cried that she was left forlorn, and taking in her touch each household thing that formerly she used, poor lady, wept o'er all, and then went ranging through the rooms, where if there caught her eye the well-loved form of any of her household, she would gaze and weep aloud, accusing her own fate and her abandoned lot, childless henceforth. When this was ended, suddenly I see her fly to the hero's room of genial rest, with unsuspected gaze o'ershadowed near i watched and saw her casting on the bed the finest sheets of all when that was done she leapt upon the couch where they had lain and lay there in the midst and the hot flood burst from her eyes before she spake farewell my bridal bed for never more shalt thou give me the comfort i have known thee give then with tight fingers she undid her robe where the brooch lay before the breast and bared all her left arm and sighed i with what speed strength ministered ran forth to tell her son the act she was preparing but meanwhile ere we could come again the fatal blow fell and we saw the wound and he her boy seeing wept aloud for now the hapless youth knew that himself had done this in his wrath told all too late in the house how she had wrought most innocently from the centaur's wit so now the unhappy one with passionate words and cries and wild embracings of the dead groaned forth that he had slain her with false breath of evil accusation and was left orphaned of both his mother and his sire such is the state within what fool is he that counts one day or two or more to come to-morrow is not till the present day in fair prosperity have passed away exit chorus which shall come first in my wail which shall be last to prevail is a doubt that will never be done trouble at home may be seen trouble is looked for with teen and to have and to look for are one strophe would some fair wind but waft me forth to roam far from the native region of my home ere death me find oppressed with wild affright even at the sudden sight of him the valiant son of zeus most high before the house they tell he fareth nigh a wonder beyond thought with torment unapproachable distraught antistrophe hark the cause then of my cry was coming all too nigh doth the clear nightingale lament for naught some step of stranger folk is this way brought as for a friend they love heavy and slow with noiseless feet they move which way which way ah me behold him come his pallid lips are dumb dead or at rest in sleep what shall i say Heracles is brought in on a litter, accompanied by Helus and an old man. Helus, O oh, woe is me, my father piteous woe for thee. O oh, whither shall I turn my thought? Ah, me. Old man, hush, speak not, O oh, my child, lest torment fierce and wild rekindle in thy father's rugged breast, and break this rest, where now his life is held at point to fall. With firm lips clenched refrain thy voice through all helis yet tell me doth he live old sir old man wake not the slumberer nor kindle and revive the terrible recurrent power of pain my son helis my foolish words are done 
but my full heart sinks neath the heavy strain heracles o father who are these what countrymen where am i what far land holds me in pain that ceaseth not ah me again that pest is rending me pain pain old man now thou mayst know twas better to have lurked in silent shade and not thus widely throw the slumber from his eyelids and his head helis i could not brook all speechless on his misery to look monody heracles o altar on the euboean strand high heaped with offerings from my hand what meed for lavish gifts bestowed from thy new sanctuary hath flowed father of gods thy cruel power hath foiled me with an evil blight ah would mine eyes have closed in night ere madness in a fatal hour had burst upon them with a blaze no help or soothing once allays what hand to heal what voice to charm can e'er dispel this hideous harm whose skill save thine monarch divine mine eyes if such i saw would hail him from afar with trembling awe ah ah oh vex me not touch me not leave me to rest to sleep my last sleep on earth's gentle breast you touch me you press me you turn me again you break me you kill me o pain o pain you have kindled the pang that had slumbered still it comes it hath seized me with tyrannous will where are ye men whom over hellas wide this arm hath freed and o'er the ocean tide and through rough breaks from every monstrous thing but now in mine affliction none will bring a sword to aid a fire to quell this fire o most unrighteous nor to my desire will come and quench the hateful life i hold with mortal stroke ah is there none so bold old man son of our hero this hath mounted past my feeble voice to cope with take him thou fresher thine eye and more the hope thou hast than mine to save him helis i support him now thus with mine arm but neither fleshly vest nor inmost spirit can i lull to rest from torture none may dream to wield this power save he the king supreme heracles son where art thou to lift me and hold me aright it tears me it kills me it rushes in might this cruel devouring unconquered pain shoots forth to consume me again and again o fate o athena o son at my word have pity and slay me with merciful sword pity thy father boy with sharp relief smite on my breast and heal the wrathful grief wherewith thy mother god abandoned wife hath wrought this ruin on her husband's life o oh, may i see her falling even so as she hath thrown me to like depth of woe sweet hades with swift death brother of zeus release my suffering breath chorus horror hath caught me as i hear this woe racking our mighty one with mightier pain heracles many hot toils and hard beyond report with sturdy thews and sinews have i borne but no such labour hath a thunderer's wife or sore eurystheus ever given as this which aeneas daughter of the treacherous eye hath fastened on my back this amply woven net of the furies that is breaking me for glued unto my side it hath devoured my flesh to the bone and lodging in the lungs it drains the vital channels and hath drunk the fresh life-blood and ruins all my frame foiled in the tangle of a viewless bond yet me nor war-host nor earth's giant brood nor centaur's monstrous violence could subdue nor hellas nor the stranger nor all lands where i have gone cleansing the world from harms but a soft woman without manhood strain alone and weaponless hath conquered me son let me know thee mine true born nor rate thy mother's claim beyond thy sire's but bring thyself from out the chambers to my hand her body that hath borne thee that my heart may be assured if lesser than my pain it will distress thee to behold her limbs with righteous torment agonized and torn nay shrink not son but pity me whom all may pity me who like a tender girl am heard to weep aloud this nun could say he knew in me of old for murmuring not i went with evil fortune silent still now such a foe hath found the woman in me i but come near stand by me and behold what cause i have for crying look but here here is the mystery unveiled o oh, see ye people gaze on this poor quivering flesh look with compassion on my misery ah me 
ah ah again even now the hot convulsion of disease shoots through my side and will not let me rest from this fierce exercise of wearing woe take me o king of night o sudden thunderstroke smite me o sire transfix me with the dart of thy swift lightning yet again that fang is tearing it hath blossomed forth anew it soars up to the height o breast and back o shrivelling arms and hands ye are the same that crushed the dweller of the nemean wild the lion unapproachable and rude the oxherd's plague and hydra of the lake of lerna and the twiform prancing throng of centaurs insolent unsociable lawless ungovernable the tusked pest of erymanthine glades then underground pluto's three-headed cur a perilous fear born from the monster worm and on the verge of earth the dragon guarding fruits of gold these toils and others countless i have tried and none hath triumphed o'er me but to-day jointless and riven to tatters i am wrecked thus utterly by imperceptible woe i proudly named alcmena's child and his who reigns in highest heaven the king supreme ay but even yet i tell ye even from here where i am nothingness and cannot move she who hath acted thus shall feel my power let her come near that mastered by my might she may have this to tell the world that dying as living i gave punishment to wrong chorus o hellas how i grieve for thy distress how thou wilt mourn in losing him we see Helas, my father since thy silence gives me leave still hear me patiently though in thy pain for my request is just lend me thy mind less wrathfully distempered than tis now else thou canst never know where thou art keen with vain resentment and with vain desire heracles speak what thou wilt and cease for i in pain catch not the sense of thy mysterious talk helas i come to tell thee of my mother's case and her involuntary unconscious fault heracles base villain hast thou breathed thy mother's name thy father's murderess and my hearing too helas her state requires not silence but full speech heracles her faults in former time might well be told helas so might her fault to-day couldst thou but know heracles speak but beware base words disgrace thee not helas list she is dead even now with new-given wound heracles by whom thy words flash wonder through my woe helas her own hand slaughtered her no foreign stroke heracles wretch to have reft this office from my hands helas even your rash spirit were softened if ye knew heracles this bodes some knavery but pronounce thy thought helas she erred with good intent the whole is said heracles good o thou villain to destroy thy sire helas when she perceived that marriage in her home she erred supposing to enchain thy love heracles hath trachis a magician of such might helas long since the centaur nessus moved her mind to work this charm for heightening thy desire heracles o oh, horror thou art here i am no more my day is darkened boy undone undone i see our plight too plainly woe is me come o oh, my son thou hast no more a father call to me all the brethren of thy blood and poor alcmena wedded all in vain unto the highest that ye may hear me tell with my last breath what prophecies i know helas thy mother is not here but by the shore of tyrans hath obtained a dwelling-place and of thy sons some she hath with her there others at thebes are settled o my sire but all we whom thou seest if there be aught that may by us be done will hear and do heracles then hearken thou unto this task and show if worthily thou art reputed mine now is time to prove thee my great father forewarned me long ago that i should die by none who lived and breathed but from the will of one now dwelling in the house of death and so this centaur as the voice divine then prophesied in death hath slain me living and in agreement with that ancient word i now interpret newer oracles which i wrote down on going within the grove of the hill roving and earth couching selly dictated to me by the mystic tongue innumerous of my father's sacred tree 
declaring that my ever instant toils should in the time that now hath being in life end and release me and i looked for joy but the true meaning plainly was my death no labour is appointed for the dead then since all argues one event my son once more thou must befriend me and not wait for my voice goading thee but of thyself submit and second my resolve and no filial obedience for thy noblest rule helis i will obey thee father though my heart sinks heavily in approaching such a theme heracles before aught else lay thy right hand in mine helis why so intent on this assurance sire heracles give it at once and be not froward boy helis there is my hand i will gainsay thee naught heracles swear by the head of him who gave me life helis tell me the oath and i will utter it heracles swear thou wilt do the thing i bid thee do helis i swear and make zeus witness of my troth heracles but if you swerve pray that the curse may come helis it will not come for swerving but i pray heracles now dost thou know on eta's topmost height the crag of zeus helis i know it and full oft have stood there sacrificing heracles then even there with thine own hand uplifting this my body taking what friends thou wilt and having lopped much wood from the deep-rooted oak and rough wild olive lay me on the gathered pile and burn all with the touch of pine-wood flame let not a tear of mourning dim thine eye but silent with dry gaze if thou art mine perform it else my curse awaits thee still to weigh thee down when i am lost in night helis how cruel o my father is thy tongue heracles tis peremptory else if thou refuse be called another's and be no more mine helis alas that thou shouldst challenge me to this to be thy murderer guilty of thy blood heracles not i in sooth but healer of my pain and sole preserver from a life of woe helis how can it heal to burn thee on the pyre heracles if this act frighten thee perform the rest helis mine arm shall not refuse to carry thee heracles and wilt thou gather the appointed wood helis so my hand fire it not in all but this not scanting labour i will do my part heracles enough tis well and having thus much given add one small kindness to a list so full helis how great so e'er it were it should be done heracles the maid of eurytus thou knowest i ween helis of iole thou speak'st or i mistake heracles of her this then is all i urge my son when i am dead if thou wouldst show thy duty think of thine oath to me and on my word make her thy wife nor let another man take her but only thou since she hath lain so near this heart obey me o my boy and be thyself the maker of this bond to spurn at trifles after great things given were to confound the mead already won helis o oh, anger is not right when men are ill but who could bear to see thee in this mind heracles you murmur as you meant to disobey helis how can i do it when my mother's death in thy sad state sprang solely from this girl who not possessed with furies could choose this far better father for me too to die than to live still with my worst enemy heracles this youth withdraws his reverence in my death but if thou yield'st not to thy father's bidding the curse from heaven shall dog thy footsteps still helis ah thou wilt tell me that thy pain is come heracles yea for thou wakes the torment that had slept helis ay me how cross and doubtful is my way heracles because you will reject your father's word helis must i be taught impiety from thee heracles it is not impious to content my heart helis then you require this with an absolute will heracles and bid heaven witness to my strong command helis then i will do it for the act is thine i will not cast it off obeying thee my sire the gods will ne'er reprove my deed heracles thou endest fairly now then o my son add the performance swiftly that before some spasm or furious onset of my pain seize me your care may place me on the pyre come 
loiter not but lift me now my end is near the last cessation of my woe helis since thy command is urgent o my sire we tarry not but bear thee to the pyre heracles stubborn heart ere yet again wakes the fierce rebound of pain while the evil holds aloof thou with bit of diamond proof curb thy cry with forced will steaming to do gladly still helis lift him men and hate not me for the evil deeds ye see since the heaven's relentless sway recks not of the righteous way he who gave life end doth claim from his seat a father's name can behold this hour of blame though the future none can tell yet the present is not well sore for him who bears the blow sad for us who feel his woe shameful to the gods we trow chorus maidens from the palace hall come ye forth too at our call mighty deaths beyond belief many an unknown form of grief ye have seen to-day and naught but the power of zeus hath wrought end of part two Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. End of Trachinii by Sophocles. Translated by Lewis Campbell, 1830-1908. to